Whether you're working on a biography project, a discussion question about a play, or a detailed examination of a particular aspect of a work of literature, known as literary analysis, you will need to use literary sources. Literature requires a different type of research than you may have done before. But don't worry, today we'll demystify literary sources. You may have heard about primary and secondary sources before. Broadly speaking, a primary source is one that you or authors writing secondary sources are analyzing. In the case of literary research, these are mostly poems, plays, short stories, novels, or films. They can also be letters, newspaper articles, autobiographies, or other sources from the time period the work was written. For example, here is Charlotte Perkins Gilman's short story, The Yellow Wallpaper. It was written in 1892 and tells the story of a woman who was forced to take the rest cure, which is basically being imprisoned in your bed without anything to do or anyone to talk to. And then she goes insane. Another primary source related to the story is Gilman's explanation, Why I Wrote the Yellow Wallpaper, which gives context from the author's life and the time it was written in her own words. A secondary source is one that analyzes the primary source you're researching or a related topic. The paper you're writing is a secondary source, since you are analyzing a primary literary work or author. Other secondary sources help to support your analysis, such as biographies, work topic or theme overviews, and literary criticism. These sources will discuss some aspect of the author's life, works, themes, time period, or style. Let's start with biographies. These are articles, book chapters, or books about the author and the author's life. They are secondary sources because someone writing a biography collects all the sources that give details from the author's life and summarizes them for you after the fact. Next are overviews, which include several types. Work overviews generally give a summary of the work, themes, rhetorical devices, author, time period, and maybe even brief criticism. These are easy to identify by their sections and broad treatment of many aspects of the work. The author addresses each section with only a handful of paragraphs, which isn't much in terms of depth. Work overviews are usually part of a large reference series, such as master plots, short stories for students, or critical insights. Some overviews focus on a specific aspect of the story. For example, the Literature and Its Time series centers what was going on in history at the time the work was written. Topic and theme overviews focus on broader topics or themes within literature in general, and do not always directly mention the work you're analyzing. Although it's easiest to find sources that address the author or work you're studying directly, you can still apply a more general source to your research. For example, an article on the origin of the rest cure would be useful when analyzing the yellow wallpaper, even if it doesn't specifically analyze the story. Just remember, you will need to explain how the source is relevant in your paper. As you've probably noticed, overviews are broad in scope. They are useful in providing background information and ideas for further analysis, but with a research paper, you are writing detailed analysis on one specific aspect of a work. Relying only on easier-to-read overviews may not give you the depth you need for your assignment. Literary criticism offer that depth. The detailed focus on one aspect or interpretation of a story separates critical articles from overviews. This entire article is about a single specific topic within the story, the yellow wallpaper as a symbolic order. Another distinguishing factor is the use of a critical lens. A critical lens is an established way to view and therefore interpret a work. In this case, the author applies Lacanian psychoanalysis and the aspect of symbolic order, in particular, to the story to support her interpretation that Jane is really no freer at the end of the story than at the beginning. What's a symbolic order? I don't know either. That's why you need to read these articles carefully and plan ahead to look up concepts you aren't familiar with. Because of the detail involved in literary critical articles, they are harder to read than overviews. Literary criticisms are written by literary scholars for other literary scholars. The author assumes that you as a reader are already familiar with the plot of the story, the author's life, and the main critical interpretations of the work, the way someone who regularly studies literature likely would. Because of this, the text will be harder to understand without that background knowledge. Carefully reading your primary text, a few overviews, and an introduction to the critical lens first 
will provide the background information you need to understand the article. Even after reading those, it may take a few read-throughs to fully comprehend critical articles. That's a normal part of the process as a student. Literary criticism can be found in books, critical collections, or journals. Peer-reviewed journal articles are a special type of literary criticism. These articles have gone through a rigorous process of review and editing by experts in literature before publication. Because of the academic scrutiny these articles undergo, they are generally understood as the most credible sources in academic research. On a related note, you've probably heard the terms scholarly, credible, or reliable. We've deliberately avoided them so far. Why? Because instructors have differing ideas about which type of source is considered scholarly or credible. Some instructors will only accept peer-reviewed journal articles as scholarly, while others will accept anything you found using the library or even credible internet sources. You'll need to read your assignment instructions carefully and ask your instructor for clarification if the assignment parameters are unclear. To summarize, primary sources are the sources you're analyzing, and secondary sources are ones in which authors conduct analysis on the primary sources. Easy to read secondary sources, such as biographies and overviews, are the perfect place to get introductory information or ideas for further research. They can also give you the background knowledge to understand more challenging to read literary criticism that provide the necessary depth in your research. If you ever have questions about whether a source is acceptable for your specific assignment, make sure to ask your instructor. And if you need help finding literary criticism or other sources for your work, ask a librarian.